Hey guys, welcome back to another video on cryptocurrency wallets. Today, I'll be answering the questions I've been receiving about the differences between a private key and a wallet.dat file, and really how they affect your wallet security. Okay, so first let me start by talking about the private key some more. The private key is like your golden ticket. You aren't getting into that chocolate factory without it. All right, bad metaphor, but hopefully it illustrates how important and unique your private key is. Passwords are a dime a dozen. I'm sure some of you are guilty of having a password that is just literally password. But the real truth behind passwords is that length is always better than complexity. As you can see here, the longer the password I make, the longer it would take a computer to guess it. Now, you probably didn't think that you were gonna watch a video about passwords, but the essential thing here is that your private key is so long that it is literally impossible for a computer to guess it. The only way a hacker gets into your wallet is if they steal your private key. So, we gotta make sure they don't. Remember from the last video when we were setting up the encryption on the Navcoin wallet, it asked for a password. When you enter a password for your wallet, what you're really doing is encrypting your unique private key with this password. But you cannot access your wallet with just this password. Why? Because you use the private key as the only way to access that wallet. You can see this on the access page of myetherwallet.com, which is a online wallet for Ethereum. There's no way to access that wallet without the private key or an equally secure method like a Trezor or key store file, which is like the wallet.dat. They're all using the same private key, just in different methods. We're quickly getting in the weeds here and I know it's getting confusing, but if you just need to look at it at a high level, here's all you need to know. Your password encrypts the file that hosts the private key. If someone got the private key by itself, they could access your wallet without having to know your password. But if they got the wallet.dat file by itself, which contains the private key, they could not access your wallet without having the password as well. Having your password encrypt the private key file is like putting a shiny gold key inside a box and then locking that box with a different shiny gold key. Hopefully that drives home just how important your private key is and why we try to protect it. I don't recommend using the private key by itself. In my opinion, it's much more secure to back up and restore your wallet using the wallet.dat file I showed you how to get in wallets part two. Despite that, if you wanted to access your Navcoin wallet key, then first you need to turn off staking by going into settings, then clicking turn off staking. The wallet will then need to reboot, and once it starts up, you need to go into help and then click the debug window. This will bring up a new window under which you need to make sure you're in the console tab. Now type in wallet pass phrase and space, and then type in your password. I'm centered mine here. And then another space, 60. This will unlock your wallet for 60 seconds, enabling you to execute the second command, which will dump your private key. That command is dump master priv key, no spaces. So this is your unencrypted private key. Go ahead and write it down or copy it or however you need to. And then execute the last command, wallet lock, which locks your wallet again. Don't forget to restart the wallet in staking mode by going into settings and clicking turn on staking. The nice thing about having your private key written down somewhere safe is that if you wanted to restore your wallet after a hard drive crash or move it to another computer, all you would need to do is go into file and then click import private key and then you would type it in. Pretty easy. So there's two options for your backup. Either keep the wallet.dat backup in multiple locations. This is easier to restore your wallet with because all you need to have is the file and to remember your password, or you would write down your private key, and this is sometimes referred to as a paper wallet. I would not recommend typing out your private key and saving that somewhere that is connected to the internet because that is far too risky because all the hacker would need is to get that private key by itself and then you lose your coins easily. Remember, the best security system is only as good as its weakest link, so do whatever you can to have multiple backups and keep those backups protected. That's all for this video. Definitely leave a comment below if this helped or if you have further questions, and be sure to subscribe to see more videos like these. I love making them for you guys. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching.